Greetings from Washington, everyone. Uh, first, let me begin by thanking uh, Hans and the Counter Extremism Project, as well as the, the German um, Federal Foreign Office for granting me permission uh, uh, to speak at this event and allowing the State Department the opportunity to participate uh, in this discussion. Um, let me start by mentioning the use of the term REMV. Um, there is no consensus, we recognize that, on the, uh, the problem set or what the nomenclature would be. So while this term um, is often referred to for far-right extremism or right-wing extremism, extremism uh, we use the term REMV because we believe it is more accurately encompasses the broad array of ideologies that drive terrorism that are separate and distinct from Islamist terrorist groups. The individuals and groups engaging in racially or ethnically motivated attacks attempt to sow fear among their target community and ignite a wider conflict. They seek to intimidate and coerce their victims to advance their political goals. Some of the high profile attacks that occurred in the last two years, including in Christchurch, El Paso and Halal, indicate growing international connectivity among REMV actors, particularly through online communities. So today I will provide an overview of the Biden administration's priorities uh, then discuss a broad overview of our um, uh, efforts to counter an uh, online presence, and then as well as uh, mention our participation in the Christchurch call. Um, but first, let me say the United States is committed to advocating for and encouraging voluntary efforts by private companies to take the necessary steps for terrorism prevention, including the use of the internet for terrorist purposes by staying consistent with our constitutional rights and our longstanding support for secure, open, and interoperable internet. Let me begin now by discussing the Biden administration's priorities. So countering REMV, including violent white supremacy within and beyond our borders is a top priority for the President Biden and Vice President Harris administration. The Department of State is developing a series of measures to help us meet and counter this threat. For example, we are conducting an independent study that maps the global connections between REMV actors, including white identity terrorist individuals and groups. We are coll collaborating with our diplomatic posts and our interagency partners to develop a department strategy on how we are countering this threat and the broader REMV movement. In March, we sent a cable to all of our posts globally, soliciting input about REMV in their respective countries. Their inputs will be incorporated into the annual country reports on terrorism and in coordination with the White House, the biannual sanctions report. To emphasize, on his first full day in office, President Biden directed his national security team to lead a 100-day comprehensive review of U.S. government efforts to address domestic terrorism. And in June, the Biden administration released the first ever national strategy for countering domestic terrorism to address this challenge to America's national security and improve the federal government's response. It is imperative to note that throughout the process, we embrace the protection of civil rights and civil liberties as a national security imperative. This strategy is organized under four pillars. The first is understanding and sharing domestic terrorism related information. The US government will enhance domestic terrorism analysis and improve information sharing throughout law enforcement and where appropriate private sector partners. The Department of State will continue to assess whether additional foreign entities linked to domestic terrorism can be designated as foreign terrorist organizations or specially designated global terrorists under relevant statutory criteria. The second pillar is preventing domestic terrorism recruitment and mobilization to violence. The US government has revamped support to community partners who can help to prevent individuals from ever reaching the point of committing terrorist violence. The US government will strengthen domestic terrorism prevention resources and services. We will also, as the government, augment its efforts to address online terrorist recruitment and mobilization to violence by domestic terrorists through increased information sharing with the technology sector and the creation of innovative ways to foster digital literacy and build resilience to recruitment and mobilization. The third pillar is disrupting and deterring domestic terrorism activity. The U.S. government will increase support to federal, state, and local law enforcement in addressing domestic terrorism nationwide. We are also improving employee screening to enhance methods for identifying domestic terrorists who might impose uh, insider threats. And then the fourth pillar is confronting long-term contributions to domestic terrorism. We'll do this through close, part close partnership with civil society and we'll address the long-term contributors that are responsible for much of today's domestic terrorism, which includes what we consider the REMV threat. Now, a few words on countering REMV and other use of the internet for terrorist purposes. To prevent REMV actors from exploiting online platforms for terrorist purposes, we are building on our long-standing counterterrorism-related outreach to technology.
technology companies to voluntarily share information on REMV trends and tactics. As a general matter, U.S. law does not impose an obligation on Internet companies to remove, restrict, or otherwise regulate online content that is protected under the First Amendment. We encourage companies to voluntarily enhance and enforce their terms of service to ensure their platforms are not being mis misused to host REMV-related content, including coded language and symbols, while respecting freedom of expression. The removal of content that does not violate U.S. law is at the discretion of Internet and social media companies. Private companies may and do choose voluntarily to remove websites or social media accounts with content that violates their own terms of service. Now on that, we have taken up some issues with uh, regulation and uh, ampli uh, algorithmic amplification. So the Biden-Harris administration has expressed interest in analyzing regulations, such as the Communications Decency Act, Section 230, and other platform governance issues. However, we have undertaken various assessments of U.S. efforts to counter terrorism, among other important and related issues. These analyses are not all complete and ultimately will inform how we will shape future U.S. policy and, if needed, how we think about possible changes to U.S. legislation. Any changes to U.S. legislation, of course, will align with our U.S. constitutional protections for freedom of speech and our international obligations and commitments to human rights. We are actively engaged with other governments, technology companies, and civil society in international discussions on these issues. For example, the United States is participating in the Global Internet Forum to, to Counter Terrorism, the technical approaches working group in which algorithmic amplification is a key focus. And then finally, let me just mention about uh, our efforts with the Christ Church Call to Action. So the United States officially joined the Christ Church Call to Action this year, and we look forward to active partnership with other governments, the private sector, and civil society members to ensure that online platforms are not exploited for terrorist or violent extremist purposes. The United States applauds language in the Christchurch call, emphasizing the importance of respecting human rights and the rule of law, including the protection of freedom of expression. As noted in our statement in May, we highlight the importance of ensuring that governments do not abuse the call as justification for restrictions on internationally protected human rights, including the freedoms of individuals to seek, receive, and impart information through their media of choice. The urgent need to counter the exploitation of the internet by terrorists and violent extremism, extremists to promote violence should not overshadow the equally compelling need to protect human rights and fundamental freedoms, including freedom of expression for people everywhere. Let me conclude by saying REMV and violent extremism online remains a top priority for the U.S. The U.S.'s approach is a comprehensive whole of society approach, focusing not only on short-term games, but on long-term resilience to terrorist messages. We continue to maintain that the most effective means to counter terrorists or other objectionable speech is not through censorship or repression, but through more speech that promotes tolerance. Thus, we emphasize the importance of promoting credible alternative narr narratives as the primary means by which we can undermine and counter REMV messaging. Building resilience is accomplished through cultivating critical thinking skills and online public safety awareness through education and community outreach. Working with civil society, companies and communities to spread voices of tolerance and inclusion is critical to this matter. And with that, I'll just conclude. Thank you very much, Hans. I appreciate the time.